A new study out confirms what we pretty much already knew and suspected, that African Americans are more likely to be wrongfully uh, convicted of crimes that they did not commit. Now, the study essentially looked at convictions of crimes such as murder, sexual assault, and illegal drug activity, and found that they were convicted more often than white Americans, African Americans were, due to factors including racial bias and official misconduct. Now, this study was, of course, done by the National Registry of Exonerations, so they would know a little bit about this topic. Now, what they did is they examined cases from 1989 to October of 2016, and they looked at the number of exonerations for African Americans compared to uh, that of white people. Now, one of the amazing findings by the study found that of the 1,900 defendants convicted of crimes and later on exonerated, 47% of them were African Americans. That is nearly half. Now, what's interesting is that that is the three times the representation of the entire population. So they are a disproportionate share of people that are being exonerated for crimes. That also means that they're uh, the, the main share of people getting convicted for crimes that they did not commit. Wow. And again, in America, we, we have seem to have this problem uh, of incarcerating African Americans at a rate uh, that is far disproportionate to their population, the share of population. And now the study is also pointing out that they are targeted simply because of the fact that they are African American. Now, the study found that uh, they were uh, about seven times more likely to be wrongfully convicted of murder than white Americans. I mean, think about the story of the Central Park Five. This was a rape. Uh, this was a, obviously a rape murder case, but still, a lot of people thought that they were guilty long after they were actually proven to be innocent later on. And a lot of people went to prison for that, for crimes that they didn't commit. Now, uh, Samuel Gross, who is a University of Michigan Law School professor, who is a senior editor of the group that tracks exonerations in U.S. prisons, said, quote, In the murder cases we, we examined, the rate of official misconduct is considerably higher in cases where the defendant is African-American compared to cases where the defendant is white. Now, basically, what he's saying is that they make more mistakes, or either intentionally or unintentionally, and that ends up getting these African Americans put wrongfully into prison. So, I mean, if that, you know, that might mean not gathering enough evidence, not putting enough time into investigation, um, which has the effect of not actually going after and punishing the real criminals. And of course, the other effect is you end up with more black people going into the prison system who don't belong there. Basically, uh, basically, uh, Gross also said that this is partly unconscious bias, institutional discrimination, and explicit racism were factors in these wrongful convictions. Now, that whole bias and stereotyping thing, of course, it strikes again. I mean, where people will see a young black male and think, oh, he looks like a thug. He's wearing a hoodie. I mean, look at him. That guy looks dangerous. There's, he's shifty, man. He could be part of a gang or something. We don't know. So is it possible that he could have done a crime? Yeah. So that's what a lot of people unfortunately think, thanks to some stereotyping. And this, of course, is baked into the system. These, spare, uh, these stereotypes continue to be perpetrated. And, of course, uh, spread by right-wing propaganda. They'll point out things like cult, thug culture and, and rap music as evidence that they are correct, that they are right. And so that is wrong. That is absolutely wrong. And I don't know if you know this, but young white males also get into trouble. Young white males, I mean, look, uh, there's a lot of people too that want to point out in this study that well, what, what about young white men being put into the prison system? Look, there's also a problem with just imprisoning poor people. I mean, we have the return of debtors' prisons, uh, in some states and you know the war on drugs of course it affects everybody but again it's disproportionately affecting African Americans and I don't think it has anything to do uh, with being uh, 
uh, being put into prison with being a, a, a certain race or color really, I mean, uh, when it comes to, to uh, committing crime, I mean, it's got uh, more to do with being young and stupid and <laughs> doing dumb things. So that's what's going on here. Now, the study also talked about drug crimes. Now, it points out that black Americans are about 12 times more likely to be wrongfully convicted than innocent white people when it comes to things like possession and drug dealing. Now, there's also been the issue of some crooked police officers planting drugs in order to make arrests. I mean, they say they don't have a quota. They have a quota. A separate study from the same group, also released on Tuesday, showed that 2016 set a record for known exonerations in the United States since 1989 at 166, up from 160 cases in 2015. So interestingly enough, uh, nearly 60 of the exonerations came from the state of Texas. That's the most of any state. So Texas seems to have a problem with throwing black people in prison, even though uh, these people often or oftentimes end up being innocent disaster now uh most of the uh i'm sorry um there are district attorneys now in these counties that include houston and dallas that have now because of this have set up integrity units to examine prosecutions for possible problems i mean because texas seems to have more of a problem than anybody else does and most of the texas exonerations happen to be stemming from drug convictions in harris county that is, of course, home to Houston. In many of the cases, suspects pleaded guilty to drug possession, and months or years later, reports from the crime lab show that seized material contained no controlled substances. That's very, very interesting. And I think part of that is because these people end up getting pressured to confess for a crime that they haven't committed. Now, nationwide, 52 defendants were exonerated of murder, and 73 were exonerated of nonviolent crimes, such as drug possession. Now, interestingly enough, after Texas, Illinois had the most exonerations in 2016 at 16 of them, followed by New York with 14 and California with nine. So again, uh, this whole stuff, this, this whole thing is a, we already kind of knew this. We knew this was happening. However, it seems to be good to, uh, it, it's pretty good to know that we have the facts so that maybe we can actually solve this problem. And part of it, if the study points out, the problem is institutional and outright racism. Then, of course, there are financial incentives because of the uses of private prisons, which incentivize us to pass tough on crime laws, which is another problem, uh, and continue the war on drugs in order to do shareholder profit. When you start putting a profit motive in putting people in prison, well, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to do what they can. They're going to use that profit to lobby in order to get tougher laws so they can put even more people into prison. That's what's going on. It's disgusting. And of course, you have uh, implicit bias as well that gets more that ends up getting more people into trouble. Again, oh well, he he, he fits the profile of a criminal. Well, why is that? Well, he he looks he's black. He's intimidating. He's scary. He's wearing a hoodie. Of course, it has to be the guy. That's the stuff that we have to fix, man. And until we do fix this stuff, innocent people will continue to go to prison for vast stretches at a time. And where I come from, that's not justice. That is plain wrong. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYT Nation.